the gut microbiome is this dynamic living ecosystem within, within us that is uh, necessary for us to thrive and, and to live from a number of different metabolic points of view. And that when we eat, we eat not only to provide calories for us and micronutrients and other essentials for our cellular health and our overall health, but we feed them as well. So when we eat, somehow we have to think and keep in mind is that we need to feed another organism within us because that organism will in turn support our, our health and our growth. For example, you mentioned the term probiotics and prebiotics. Probiotics, the definition, are the living organisms that are commensal in nature and they are symbiotic and they help us thrive and we are taking them in in one form or another. Whether it's in a dietary supplement form, hence the term probiotic supplements, or in a diet, and actually by doing that, they actually provide a, a health benefit because you're supporting the microbiome. And, and likewise, prebiotics are food substances that actually support the health of the gut microbiome. So there are foods that are prebiotic in nature, like asparagus and bananas and artichokes and, and so many different foods that actually that are not fermentable by us, but are by the good bacteria, and they actually selectively help the growth of the commensal and or healthy friendly flora that are within us. And so we can take those prebiotics in a supplement form or more importantly in food form. So when we eat smart, we have to kind of keep in mind that what we eat will support our microbial health and not just eat for pleasure or calories. If you make the yogurt yourself, you'll get over 100 million CFUs or colony forming units per serving. Whereas on the shelf, if you get, you know, at best three to four billion so units per serving, if you have Activia, which is a, a drink, then maybe you'll get up to 10 billion. And now there's these kefirs, which are fermented milks that people drink in shakes that have a lot of sugar, but they'll also have, you know, higher doses of the bacteria in them. And then really the studies haven't looked at the flavored ones to see what the, you know, the yin and yang of, you know, the negative of the sugar and the positive of the, given the bacteria. Now there's kefirs or these fermented milks that are plain that you can flavor yourself with vanilla or stevia or whatever you prefer, or make smoothies like many people do using plain kefir as a base and putting in fresh berries. Um, that's probably the best way to go because the berries are prebiotic in nature. The kefir's got really high doses and high concentrations of probiotics. So if you really want to be serious about repopulating your microbiome, having some commercial grade yogurt is better than maybe having ice cream but there's still some, you know, it's not suboptimal. You've spoken with Marty Blazer, I, I trust. He's a, uh, an expert on the microbiome, uh, was a dean at NYU, and wrote a book called Missing Microbes. He was able to induce obesity in mice just by giving sub-therapeutic antibiotics, the kind that you and I would get in steak, you know, once to twice weekly, and that amount of antibiotic that's in the meat. It's actually in the meat, and when we ingest it, we absorb the antibiotic, and it's enough in us to cause obesity. The other piece of data that uh, Marty did was the VA on vets who were treated and had H. pylori, which is a stomach bug that people get and causes all kinds of problems. These vets, you look at their BMI before, you look at their appetite, stimulating hormones, the ghrelin that is made by the stomach, that goes up, induces their appetite, and their weight goes up after treatment for H. pylori. And in this country, only 5% of the population of H. pylori throughout the rest of the world is 50%. So we treat if someone's, you know, walking around, they got H. pylori written over their head, we're treating with, a, with antibiotics. So the book is about overdoing it with antibiotics. You know, there's a lot of data on the uh, children who are getting it for viral infections and otitis media. And there's more and more data on linking not only obesity in children who get antibiotics early on, but Crohn's disease and other autoimmune diseases are linked to early onset of uh, antibiotics in proportional doses. And that's when the microbiome is being laid down and immunity is being laid down in the first two years of life. So we start messing around with that. The consequences downstream can be unfortunately bad.